begin. 007 Nightfire. When you think about this game, you think about an action-packed story mode. You got stealth, you got driving, and cutscenes where James is always f oh. I actually forgot about the story mode until I just replayed it this week. But I'll never forget the multiplayer with all the stuff it offers. So many cool diverse characters like Nick Knack, he's like a knick-knack. Jaws, he's big and slow. Ninja, he's quick, he's hard to hit. <laughs> Pussy galore is the one. <laughs> Why'd they name it that? You can use your grapple device to get to hard to reach areas. You can use a remote controlled helicopter to shoot people. There's even little tanks that are really hard to control. But out of all the weapons this game has to offer, there's not one weapon even in this world that compares to the sheer firepower of Oddjob's hat. A weapon specific to only him, where he just keeps regenerating them over and over again. You can literally snipe people with it and launch it as fast as you can. It's unfair, but it's funny to use. <laughs> Other than Oddjob's hat, there's the golden gun, which is located in the hard to reach areas, but it's a one shot kill. There's a lot of cool maps in this game, but I like to stick to Skyrail because it's so classic. You can ride on the gondola and snipe from the rooftops. Snowblind's good too. I'm sure we all know about the multiplayer, but now we can talk about the story. You have the freedom to play stealthy like a spy, or run and gun if you have no patience. That's what I did. I didn't get any of the cool medals or anything. I didn't really know what I was doing, honestly. I will now condense the story into the shortest possible sequence. Comment down below your favorite moments. Mission 1, the Paris Prelude. Super overpowered sniper in a helicopter. <laughs> Then you're introduced to the Aston Martin V12 Vanquish. And the main man himself. Who are you? My name is Dace. Some very fast-paced driving, a great way to start off the story mode. Ah! Mission 2, The Exchange. Drop it in the Drake's secret compound. Taking out some snow guards with their silenced weaponry. Creeping in on the secret evil activity of Project Nightfire. Then you get to use the classic Sentinel missile launcher to take down Rook as you make your escape. There's a lot more to this mission than I just said, but bear with me. Mission 3, Alpine Escape. I sure hope no one kicks this door open with maximum force. You get to man the turret-mounted snowmobile in this action-packed, fast-paced, snowy ride of a mission. Kinda feels like one of those arcade games where you shoot the screen, like with the plastic gun, if you know what I'm talking about. A lot of cool scenery in this one. Mission 4, Enemies Vanquished. I don't recall getting much rest at all, James. James is f You hit some sick jumps in this one. Kinda gives you those SSX out of bounds vibes. And then you finish off by shooting down helicopters on ice. That sounds like a play. Welcome aboard, 007. Mission 5, Double Cross. Arriving in Tokyo, you meet, I think it's Tokyo. You meet Alexander Mayhew. Could you wipe the hard drive on my computer? And his bodyguard, Kiko. And she's quite skilled. She's quite skilled. After erasing evidence, saving the servants, Ooh. putting this in the dragon's mouth, Feed it to the dragon. a ninja appears on the rooftops like Santa. That's what Santa means. Santa. Before he can blink, he jumps and hits Mayhew with the kill shot. I cried during this scene for like 45 minutes. Mission 6, Night Shift. The briefing says it all. You gotta be quite sneaky in this one. Armed with tranquilizers and no license to kill. Who's there? You install some Q-worms, uh, steal some info, and then jump off the roof to your safety. Well, would you ladies mind giving me a ride? <laughs> mission 7, Chain Reaction. Another very smooth, smooth mission briefing. <laughs> this sniper heavy mission had me feeling like a MLG quickscoper. What the hell's happening up there? Then that darn Kiko shows up. Kiko! And I have a feeling she's up to no good. And boy, was I right. You must be exhausted, James. What would you say to a little nap? That wasn't the actual scene, by the way. It was just the tranquilizer dart. Which leads us to mission eight, Phoenix Fire. We're taken to the rooftop, and Drake has some bad news for us. Dominique's given a death sentence, and all hell breaks loose. Goodbye, Dominique. We shoot our way through the building, fight our way down the elevator shaft, disabling satchel charges with our laser watch. Edit watch beam. Luckily, we're saved just in time by Alora McCall, Australian intelligence. Alora McCall, Australian intelligence. Mission nine, deep descent. This is me floating in water. 
Underwater car submarine, advanced remote missiles, dodging minefields like that one mission in Shark Tale, or Finding Nemo, whatever game that was, blowing up Drake's stuff like his missiles and his submarines. I had to replay this one a lot. I failed multiple times. There's no checkpoint. There's never valet parking when you need it most. Ah! Mission 10, island infiltration. Some four-wheeling, missile-dealing, jungle time, driving action. Taking out sentinels, blowing stuff up. But wait, that's not all. You're in a plane car now, blowing up bridges. Boats, planes, defense towers. And now that's not all. Now you're in a sentinel blowing stuff up. Tanks, submarines. I, I left a lot out with this one as well, so. Mission 11, countdown. We start off stealthy with a crossbow, taking out guards secretly while looking for Kiko in the hallways. You get to use some cool high-tech weapons you finally kill Rook with. But that darn Kiko dupes us again as we're dropped down to the rocket launch area. But just when she thinks she's slick, we flip the script on her and send her to the launch zone. Very nice ending to that mission. I suppose I'm rising to the occasion. And then finally, mission 12, Equinox. The final and shortest mission in this whole game. Drake's out there in space. He preemptively claims victory. Nothing can stop Operation Nightfire. Star Wars style fighting, we take down Drake's most hardened combat veterans. You could use this cool samurai gun too. All you gotta do is destroy his missiles and then shoot him a couple times and send him flipping off into the atmosphere. Team Rocket's blasting off again! And I actually never technically beat the game because it froze in the final final cutscene. But these are mere technicalities. This game is definitely one of the most classic games that still gets the love it deserves today. If you like the old school classic shooter games, I recommend getting a multi-tap like the four player thing and playing with your friends on split screen. It's so much fun. And if you do, use Oddjob's hat for me and tell me how it goes. And hey, thank you guys so much for the support I've been getting on each video so far. All the nice comments I see make me want to keep making more and I have fun doing it as well. So thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed my take on 00 7 Nightfire. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. Notifications as well so you, so you don't miss a video. Looks like that's my ride coming. See you guys in the next one. Ah! Hope you guys had a good Christmas. I'm gonna toast to the Christmas spirit.